Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I have two special guests. One is a returning guest, and another is the chief executive officer at a sock company that encourages you to be awesome, wear awesome. And this sock company is so awesome, they have partnered with a former guest to bring awareness to an issue where one of eight U.S. women, roughly 13%, will develop over the course of a women's lifetime, breast cancer. For Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I bring this special episode to help bring awareness to a cause that is quite literally close to everyone's heart. But first, a few statistics. In 2021, an estimated 281,550 new cases of invasive breast cancer are expected to be diagnosed in women in the U.S., along with 49,290 new cases of non-invasive breast cancer. About 43,600 women in the U.S. are expected to die in 2021 from breast cancer. Sadly, this is nothing new. Death rates have been steady in women under 50 since 2007, but have continued to drop in women over 50. Overall death rate from the breast cancer decreased by 1% per year from 2013 to 2018. These decreases are thought to be the result of treatment advances in early detection through screening. But this is a show about entrepreneurship and business. Why is this important? Fair enough, but let me drop some additional statistics to help paint a broader picture. About 2,650 new cases of invasive breast cancer are expected to be diagnosed in men in 2021. This is not just a women issue. This is a human being issue. As of 2021, breast cancer became the most common cancer globally, accounting for 12% of all new annual cancer cases worldwide, according to the World Health Organization. To my fellow humans, I encourage you to check yourself often and get checked annually. Abnormal lumps should always be checked out by a professional. A woman's risk of breast cancer nearly doubles if she has a first-degree relative, mother, sister, daughter, who has been diagnosed with breast cancer. This message is not to scare anyone. Quite the opposite. I am an advocate of health care. I hope this message encourages you to take a moment to examine yourself. And I do not mean right right now. Listen to the episode first, but at your own private time, check yourself. It is what helped one of our guests find her own breast cancer, which paved the way for this entire collaboration to exist. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My next two guests is a new one and a returning one. These two entrepreneurs are collaborating for Breast Cancer Awareness Month to Socket Tube Cancer. Please welcome the founder of Fighting Pretty, Kara Frazier, and the Chief Operating Officer of Socket Tube, Eva Ho. Today, I have a return guest and a new guest. Please welcome first, Kara. With a new last name, Kara Fraser, who you may remember as Kara Scaffoldstad. Congratulations on the wedding. Thank you so much. Thank you for returning. And then we have a new guest as well with us, Eva Ho, the CEO of Socket To Me. So we're going to kind of get into both of these uh, brands. But first, let's let's introduce the world to Miss Ho. Oh, wow. Right off the bat. Right off the bat. Okay. All right. Because I've been listening to your podcast, I tried to pull my brief history together. Um, I always like to start with, I'm the daughter of a couple who came from opposite sides of the United States. My mother is from Hawaii, and my dad hails from Virginia. 
Um, early on in their marriage, uh, they mm-hmm. left the United States and went overseas. So I was actually born in Tehran, Iran. Oh, wow. In the uh, mid-1970s. And uh, for your history buffs out there, I think they'll know that it was a very interesting time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for the rest of my childhood, we moved um, and I spent the majority uh, of that time uh, living and growing up in South Korea, Hong Kong and Singapore. Wow. That is, that is incredible. Yeah. So I consider myself a global citizen. <laughs> Um, and it wasn't until I decided to move back to the United States um, to go uh, to go to college. I went to the Uni- University of Puget Sound in Tacoma, Washington, and uh, and just kind of got reacquainted with what it meant to be an American and live in this country. Um, and I'd say for the for the next twenty th- three years of my adult life, I've really just been embracing this experiment called life. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's included, I think, a lot of formal and informal education, a lot of travel, um, a lot of pursuing personal passions that, you know, run the gamut from artistic to athletic. Um, I started, a fa- I fell in love, I started a family. Um, I've had a variety of professional experiences um, and that leads me to kind of here. I sit before you guys today as the CEO of a small business. Oh man, that is awesome. I was, I was like, Hey, yeah, let's, let's just, you know, introduce and then you just blow us away with this global (laughs) travel. That was amazing. I love that. I am so envious because I think I've been out of the country like twice in my entire life. And then COVID kind of just put the kibosh to travel after that. Now let's introduce the world to a new Kara. Kara Frazier. <laughs> a new Kara. A new Kara, but the same old <laughs> Fighting Pretty, which is, again, for those folks at home that may have not listened to the previous episode, Fighting Pretty is a nonprofit organization that really focuses on helping those individuals that are fighting through cancer treatment, correct? Mm-hmm. So, Kara, let's let's talk a little bit about Fighting Pretty and introduce the world to Kara. Yes, yeah, so I am Kara Frazier, as Gabe had said. Um, I did just get married in July of this year to a wonderful man, Ben Frazier, um, who's amazing. But yes, yeah, so I unfortunately don't have as much global experience. <laughs> um, I was born in New Jersey, and <laughs> they say you can't take you could take the girl out of Jersey, but and which is wholeheartedly true. Um, I, yeah, my background is really, you know, grew up in New Jersey, um, went to school on the East Coast in Pennsylvania, had um, a major in marketing. And so that really drew me into New York City. So I lived in New York for about 10 years before I moved out here to Portland, fell in love with Portland. And it was during my time in New York when I was 26 years old, I was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer. Um And it obviously changed my life and, you know, it really made my whole perspective pivot in a way that, you know, I was kind of climbing the corporate ladder in marketing and business, but I had this passion for helping women battling cancer and going through it so young, you know, it kind of came to me that I really wanted to help women through the emotional aspects of cancer. I knew myself I couldn't cure cancer, um, but I knew that I could help people through the emotions. And so it was a pair of mini boxing gloves that someone gave me when I was going through treatment that really helped remind me to stay strong. And it was some hot pink lipstick that I typically wear still to this day to help me feel beautiful. And when I was a couple years out of treatment, I sent on my gloves to another woman battling cancer and that really helped her. And she sent them on to another and another and another. And so Fighting Pretty really was born. Um, and so it was while I was in New York that, you know, I, I kind of realized this was something I could do. And yep. so I started Fighting Pretty, became a full, true nonprofit. And, you know, here we are almost 10 years later helping women battling cancer feel strong and beautiful. It's amazing. We've helped, yeah, almost 20,000 women so far. And that's that's kind of where this collaboration started from, right? Where we're, So we're going to talk about that. But first, let's, for the listeners at home, I want them to understand what Socket to Me is. What what kind of business is it and, and what does it sell? Huh, yeah, well, Socket to Me is a lifestyle brand that's really fueled by the belief that uh, the ordinary everyday item can be extraordinary. I mean, to put it simply, for the last 17 years, we've been designing socks and underwear that, uh, for the whole family, that really celebrates and honors the uh, diversity and personality. So whether your, int- your interests lie in sports, gaming, food, um, 
uh, the adventures of Sasquatch uh, or anything <laughs> else magical that kind of colors outside of the lines, um, we have a pair of socks or a pair of underwear that you can wear that can showcase that bit of personality to the world. Yeah, and I, I must admit, um, my my 18-month-old daughter has some. My wife loves them. She's like, they're thick. They're <laughs> super thick. And then not only that, but I, for the folks at home, I may have mentioned this on previous episodes. You know, my brother, uh, he has an amputee. He also has these socks because they are they have so many variations of sizes, mm-hmm. of thickness, and really is it, you can really diversify all the individuals that are wearing this sock. So I, just a little plug for those. I think it is really a great <laughs> brand. But let's let's talk a little bit. How did one? How did you hear about Fighting Pretty? And then let's talk about what what we're doing, what you guys are doing together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really this this podcast really started everything. I mean, I've been a fan. Um, and I happened to be listening to your interview with Kara one day while I was out on a walk, and I was really moved by her personal story. Um, I was so impressed that this, you know, woman who uh, overcame such a dark period in her life with strength and optimism um, not only overcame her personal battle, but then turned back and extended a hand to women who were going through the same thing. It just, it spoke to me on so many different levels. And um, my first thought was, of course, like, thank goodness there are people like this in the world. <laughs> Second was, how, how do I help? How do I, uh, how do I, uh, how do I get involved? And, um, you know, from a business perspective, you can always kind of, when when you're in a position to do so, to give back to the community, I'm definitely an advocate for that. Um, It's just being a a good member of your community. Um, And so I just started thinking, you know, there's got to be more than just writing a check. Um, And I had uh, recalled feedback that we get from, um, from customers on a number of occasions where they have um, their customers of ours who have been going through chemotherapy or experiencing cancer, um, and they received a pair of our socks as a gift from a loved one. And on a practical level, it helped so much with the, you know, keeping your feet warm during treatment. But the design or the pattern spoke to them, whether it was something that was, um, you know, inspirational, sentimental, um, it spoke to them personally and it helped them kind of persevere and over and and overcome and it kind of softened what they were experiencing and I thought this might be the perfect opportunity while this happens very organically for us to partner with somebody who would help us get our product directly in the hands of the people going through this so on a whim I asked for an introduction and I reached out and and here we are Yes. I'm, I'm over here crying. Yeah, no. <laughs> I have tears uh, streaming down my face. But. Yeah, so I want to hear from you, Carrie. What, what is the collaboration? What are we doing? Yeah, so just to add a little bit to that background. So when, when Eva reached out, I immediately, I mean, my heart started beating, tears again in my eyes, because when I first moved to Portland, you know, Socket to Me was an incredible brand that resonated with me personally. And so when all of this kind of came together, it just felt like such an amazing and incredible opportunity. Um, and looking back on my experience going through cancer and cancer treatment, socks were a big piece of that for me. I had, um, through my radiation treatment, it was my hair was starting to grow back. You know, I was starting to feel again, a little bit like myself, but I used to wear the same pair of socks to my radiation treatments every single day. And they were kind of cheesy. They had like, you are perfect, you're amazing, you're beautiful, with all these little <laughs> like hearts and smiley faces or something on them. And right. I don't re- even remember who gave them to me. Thank you, whoever you are out there. <laughs> um, but literally, I put them on every single day because it was the one thing I could see when I was going through radiation. Mm. I'm laying on a table. I'm cold. Yeah. They're do- putting this machine over me, and I could see my little toes, and I'd be wiggling in them because I'm cold and uncomfortable. And so these socks always were something that we would also include in our pretty packages because it's this this thing, this tool to remind you that you're strong and beautiful. And so when Saka to me, when Eva reached out, it felt like the perfect opportunity. And so we worked together on creating two designs, actually, um, that will be launching in October, and we're so excited about them. One of them 
is kind of a darker, fierce, sexy, kind of tattoo-looking concept, um, which also resonates, you know, so much. I mean, in radiation, you actually get teeny little tattoos on your body. And in addition, some breast cancer patients get beautiful tattoos over their scars. That is also true, yes. Um, And so the, the concept just spoke to me immediately. I think right off the bat, we were only going to do one design. And then I was like, wait, can we do all of them, please? (laughs) I love them all. And then the second concept was a little more about beauty. And so the idea of using the lipstick, but then emphasizing the fact that you're strong and you're beautiful and you're fierce. And so these two designs are so beautiful, um, can be used also, you know, for, um, you know, for, uh, What's it called when your legs, um, com- compression, compression sucks, sorry. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. So one of them is kind of higher and can be used for compression socks. The other is just kind of a beautiful kind of sporty looking. Yeah. Like they're just perfect. They're absolutely perfect. And that our design team had such a, a great time being inspired by the story using that uh, to kind of come up with the different concepts. I I mean, they over-delivered in terms of the designs. As Kara said, it was hard to choose just the ones. But, you know, this was, I want to stress, was not something that we were looking at just like a short-term collaboration. I mean, the the intent is for us to continue providing a product that serves a great purpose like this. And so I know that our design team's really looking forward to just ongoing development in, in this way. But um, it was the design component of it, um, being able to provide product that could be included in the pretty packages, support the effort. Um, and then there's also, um, it was important for us beyond the product donation to also do use our platform to share more awareness yeah. um, behind what CARE's organization is doing. So for the month of October, we've nominated her as our Human of the Month. So we'll write this amazing article about her in, in our blog. Crying again. Got to clap again. for that one. Got to clap for that one. That's amazing. <laughs> and it's, it's really, it's again, to, to share the story, generate awareness. We also know that our own community um, of fans, there's des- a desire to help as well. So um, we're just, we're really excited to be a part of that. Yeah, it's It's incredible. And, you know, to add again to that as well, we are getting a very large donation of socks from Sakatumi that will go directly into the hands of women battling cancer that are currently in active treatment. Um, And so those are kind of within our strength and beauty program. And so what that is, is we work directly with hospitals and cancer centers across the country um, to provide kind of mini pretty packages, if you will, Mm -hmm. um, with gloves lipstick and and this time with some Sakatumi socks um, inspirational socks and those will go directly into the hands of patients and then we'll also have these Sakatumi socks available on our website fightingpretty.org where you can then build your own pretty package for someone you love battling cancer and select those socks to be included so love it. now for, for the Sakatumi company is this the first time you've done a collaboration like this or have you done previous uh, things similar yeah, so Sakatumi has a long history of collaborating with artists. Nice. Um, in the early days when we were growing, we uh, we contracted art uh, projects out uh, just as a way to supplement as we were building it, our in-house resources. Um, eventually, this kind of morphed into running an annual Design a Sock contest where we engaged our fan base to get in on the design action and the design fun. Um It helped us get a pulse on what was trending from a theme perspective. It helped us to source um, new design talent. Um, Oh wow! uh, So it's it's it's. I like to say that like we are a sock brand of the people because our fans are literally the ones who help us with our designs. Um, More recently, we have been collaborating more formally with more established artists and brands in an effort to kind of share um, share interests amongst our our consumer base. This collaboration is special in that uh, we're partnering with someone um, to do good yeah, in the community. Definitely. So it, it's there's a definitely the the artistic component because we collaborated really well on taking Kara's vision and putting them on socks. But it's uh, it's beyond that. It's that it's a col- it's a collaboration that is um, 
generating awareness, I feel like is really going to have a direct impact to uh, to someone's life. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that that just makes it that much more special. It absolutely will. It absolutely will. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You know, for those folks at home, I've had the privilege of actually seeing the designs on myself, and I got to tell you. They are really cool. I've already got the Christmas list of like who's going to get them already all lined up. Now, now for the Fighting Pretty brand, is this the first time you've done collaborations like this or is this something you've done in the past? You know, we did a big collaboration back in 2014 with um, a cosmetic kind of beauty box company called Glossy Box. And that was really the first time that we ever did a collaboration like that. It was co-branded. They kind of designed something. Um, but we've really been searching for the right partner to do this with. Yeah. Again, we don't want to just partner with someone for the sake of partnering with them. The goal is to make sure that whatever we are doing, we are helping women battling cancer feel strong and beautiful. And so, you know, it made so much sense when this opportunity came up that we could literally use this product to help them through the emotional side effects of cancer. Yeah. So. And, you know, one of the things I, I consistently stress on this show is collaborations, you know, for for those entrepreneurs, you know, not hiding your idea, getting it out in front of people, sharing it with folks because they want to help you grow. How has collaborating between the two groups, what are some like moments where you kind of thought like, wow, this was a lot easier or maybe moments of like, man, this is kind of difficult. I would say for this project, it's been so fluid and so amazing. I mean, nice. we've had such a real open communication with each other, um, you know, being able to share my vision with Saka to me and then being very open to, you know, what that vision is and how to execute on that, I think has been such an amazing partnership for us. Um, and again, because this is a product that is actually helping women, I think it's just been such a perfect collaboration. Um, and it's just been, you know, just this very constant open communication between both of us um, that's made it, you know, not only strategic, but also enjoyable and empowering. And, you know, it, it creates a great platform for us to do this for years to come as well. So, yeah, I think the key thing uh, that Kara keeps mentioning is be open. Um, you know, if there is a feeling that a partnership could exist in some way, don't be afraid yes. to put it out yes. there. Don't be afraid, even if you, you aren't sure on what the what is yet, just that there is a desire to bring two things together. Um, start the conversation. Um, be open. Brainstorm together. Um, and it's amazing how quickly, if it's really a good fit and meant to be, how quickly the two of you can kind of come together and agree on what is that vision, what is the end result we're shooting for. And then just, you know, I mean, we talked about a lot of different things and it was fun. We are not going to do all of them this year, but it, it also just sets a really good place. Um, they're placeholders for us to consider as this Absolutely. continues to evolve. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, we, you, I think, you know, Eva, you kind of mentioned the importance of, of collaboration in your world. Why is it so important in the nonprofit world? It's so important to collaborate with organizations that have a similar goal that mm -hmm. you have. Yeah. Um, and I think what made, again, what made this so special is that they, Sakatumi understands that the product is really about helping people. Um, and so we, you know, to your question earlier, Gabe, have we ever partnered with others? Yes, we have. And there's been some amazing collaborations as well. We've worked with, you know, Silver Moon Brewing yeah, who does yep. um, a fundraiser for us where they, you know, get names of cancer patients on there and they donate money to us. We've worked with, you know, another beer company, Dirty Pretty at the time, where we actually created a pink beer and proceeds went to Fighting Pretty. It was so amazing. This year, we're actually working with a new floral company called Pomp Flowers. We're hoping to work on a Fighting Pretty bouquet, you know, that also can be sent to women to uplift their mood, you know, through cancer treatment. I mean, there's been a whole bunch of different types of collaborations that, you know, we have worked on. And I think, you know, the main reason why we do that is to spread awareness of our cause, yeah. to help people understand that Fighting Pretty is a resource to help women feel strong and beautiful throughout whatever type of cancer they're going through. It's not just breast cancer. Um, and whatever stage of treatment they're at, they could be newly diagnosed or 10 years out of cancer treatment. 
and they're still fighting pretty yeah. through it all. So yeah, in fact, you you kind of touched on something. There is fighting pretty does just doesn't focus on breast cancer. In fact, they don't only have just pink gloves. That's right. Let's let's talk kind of <laughs> let's get into that. Let's there's multi colors. Yes. What do they all mean? Why are they different colors? Yes. Good question. So it fighting pretty started as a very pink brand. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Hot pink is kind of my go-to color to uplift my mood. (laughs) Mine too, definitely. (laughs) I'm wearing pink shorts. People at home, I am wearing pink shorts, I swear. (laughs) And honestly, I truly believe that pink looks good on everyone. It kind of just, I don't know, brings out this rosiness to people. And so when we launched Fighting Pretty, you know, it was all about pink, pink everywhere. And, but I quickly realized I didn't want to just help people with breast cancer. People battling all types of cancer need to feel strong and beautiful as well. And so we were getting this feedback that it felt too breast cancer focused and we wanted to make sure people knew it wasn't just focused on breast cancer. So we actually launched a sparkly pink um, glove that's just for the, you know, those who want a little extra sparkle in their lives. And then we have a pair of teal gloves, which really kind of nod to ovarian and cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. We have lavender gloves that actually um, means it's all women's cancer. And then we just launched a pair of, I like to call, badass black boxing gloves (laughs) because they are so badass. Um, We launched those because we started to get some requests for, hey, do you do anything for men? And we really don't. To be totally honest, we are a female-focused brand. We, you know, really know that strength and beauty is important to women battling cancer. However, we do have brothers in this fight. And so, you know, every once in a while we'll get a request to help a man. And so we now have created kind of a little bro box, we like to call it. (laughs) So we send them a pair of black gloves. We have some donated uh, LeClay bands that have a a nice inspirational saying on them. And then we write them a little note of inspiration. Awesome. And, you know, for those folks at home, Yes, men can in fact get breast cancer. It's 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 in fact a thing you can get it. We can also get prostate in some November Prostate Awareness Month. I will be growing a mustache. Please feel free to join me if As you guys my husband would like. will be too. Uh, <laughs> yes, just uh, you know, I can't, probably can't be seen out in public with that one. <laughs> but for the socket to me, so even let's talk a bit about socket to me. How can we support this collaboration? How can we support socket to me? Where where can we kind of find this information? Yeah, I mean, I think to support the collaboration, it's really about visiting fightingpretty.org. I mean, it's um, that's the best way to support uh, Perfect. Is, is through that. For Sakatumi, you can visit us on our website at sakatumi.com. Follow us on Instagram, um, Facebook. And, you know, if you're really interested in getting involved in designing socks and kind of inspiring the inner designer, um, visit contest.sakatumi.com. Um, the contest actually just launched this last week. Nice. We're collecting um, uh, entries through the end of September. It's a chance to win $2,000 and have your design turned into uh, our next collection. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. And then, you know, reach out to us also if you prefer to shop local. Um, help desk at socketumi.com and we'll find a retailer near you. Local. Awesome. And and one of the things too, you mentioned about that contest is that can also possibly turn into a career. Yes. You know, folks that have, I submitted one, I'm obviously doing a podcast. So my, I, did, I was not, so, I was not selected for sock designs. No, for fighting pretty for folks at home. I know we've discussed this in past episodes, but maybe if somebody has not listened to those episodes, please go back and listen to it. It's a great episode. How can they support Fighting Pretty? So there's a few ways to support Fighting Pretty. First, everything is on our website, um, fightingpretty.org. But there, we are have also launched a fight club, which is a recurring donor program. And all we ask is for a minimum of $10 donation every month. And this will help one woman battling cancer feel strong and beautiful. So this really supports our strength and beauty program where we send those kind of mini Pretty packages to cancer hospitals. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.